An article came out yesterday that you need to see. As soon as I saw it, I started putting this video together. Properly lead up to this article, I got to talk about a few things on the way, such as the petrodollar reserve currency status, which are two different things, but they're cousins. Talking about inflation, talking about energy insecurity, food insecurity, rare earth elements, global oil wars, monetary creation, and real estate. So it sounds like a lot. We have a lot of things to talk about, but it's all one thing. It's all leading up to one thing. I got to get you to this article that came out yesterday and show you how relevant it is to you. For many of you, this is your very first time here. My name is Peter Leeds, and I am the small stock specialist. You might ask yourself, why small stocks? Because they produce the biggest gains, if you know how to find them. And please understand that nothing in this video or anything we put out ever is intended as personalized trading advice for you. In transition, there's always a lot of opportunity. There are tremendous amounts of opportunity in the Great Depression. There's all sorts of opportunities right now. And right now we are in a transitionary period unlike anything we have ever seen before and unlike anything you're ever going to see again. So many things are changing right now that are going to be relevant. It's going to change the rules of the game from every aspect. And a lot of people might accuse me of being dramatic or trying to just get views on my YouTube channel. Okay, listen, I got to say it this way. I really do believe and I want you to pay attention here. I really do believe that what is about to happen is going to be so much tremendously worse than people are expecting or preparing for. There's a lot of major influences and situations which are changing dramatically right now. And a lot of this video is about exactly that. This is a new economic world order. And it's going to be incredibly financially difficult for a lot of people not just financially, militarily, and from every aspect of the economy itself. The life you've known up until this point will be very different going forward the next five years than it has been ever. To properly set the stage, I want to go back about 15 years. We'll say I took a nap for 15 years and I just woke up and I showed up and I said, okay guys, what's going on? What's new? <laughs> what would be new in the last 15 years? The virus? That's something. And what did it lead to? A tremendous amount of supply chain disruptions in the ports in China that keep shutting down for the zero COVID policy, which led to a lot of inflation. Not just that, there's other forces causing inflation, but that's one of the things that led to. Product availability inflation, price inflation. I'm always talking about the prices of products, not the actual technical definition of inflation. But if you remember, when everyone is saying that inflation was going to go up to the moon, just soar higher, what did I say? I came in and I said, no, inflation will fall. There's a lot of forces pushing inflation higher. But what are we seeing on the ground right now? There's a lot of things where the prices are actually in decline right now. Used cars, for example, shipping on the ocean, trucking on the roads, those rates, the shipping rates are in decline. There's even the beginnings of a decline in real estate values. There's been a lot of inflation in real estate prices. That is starting to slow down and we're about to see a really tough time for real estate. Prices for plastics, resins, and those kinds of materials are falling. Pulp and paper, iron and steel, that's how it begins. And a lot of the inflation will come down as well because of the economic difficulties we're about to face. There will be less money for people to spend on things. And you're even seeing it right now. The middle class is not spending as much. Even the wealthy are spending less now. The entire economy is slowing down. The velocity of money has already fallen off a cliff and it could go even lower as things cool down naturally. I also talked about disinflation when nobody else did. I saw one other person on YouTube mention the word disinflation. I saw two written mentions of it. Nobody really committed to it. But I told you there will be disinflation and we've seen that now. Disinflation refers to the rate of the change of inflation. So when inflation goes up 7%, then it goes up 3%, then it goes up 1%, there's still inflation, but that is disinflation. The rate of the increase is slowing down. And it's leading into what will be deflation and also a massive deleveraging of all the debts that we've reached out and taken on. People are completely maxed out in terms of leverage, in terms of how much they borrow to invest in stocks, to buy a house, to get the newest fancy car. Everyone's maxed out. That is going to come back down. Nothing goes greater than maximum. And then we had the unprovoked massacre of the Ukrainian people by the Russian army. Not only was it that assault, but there's also the response, freezing up half of their gold reserves, not allowing them to sell oil. And if you look at how many sanctions 
there were in the history of mankind up until this point, there's more on Russia on this event alone than all of the other sanctions put together, which is leading to food insecurity, especially considering that Ukraine and Russia export so much of the world's wheat and potash, which is used as a fertilizer to grow crops such as wheat. But not only is there food insecurity, there's energy insecurity. And if there wasn't, we wouldn't be talking about it so much. Across every major media outlet, they're all mentioning the energy insecurity. The European Union very badly wants to buy oil from Iran. Iran says we very badly want to sell you oil, but they're not allowed. The European Union already gets most of their energy from Russia. They're starting to not be allowed to buy oil from Russia. But they very badly want energy in the European Union. And we're going to get into this in a second with the article about the reserve currency status. You can't be the reserve currency if you're imposing so many sanctions and you're only allowing certain countries, certain individuals to transact with your dollar. It has to be usable by everyone across the world to be the reserve currency. And am I in favor of the sanctions against Russia? Absolutely. But I'm saying that it diminishes the value of a reserve currency the fewer people who are allowed to use it and the more power it has to start controlling different countries or responding to different actions that countries take. I'm not making any comment about what's right and wrong, what we should do about it. I'm making a comment that if you're going to be the reserve currency, it needs to be globally usable. But that was the point of my video about the coming oil wars. The oil wars will break out as we run out of oil, not once we've run out of oil. It's already starting. Some of the actions going on right now actually involve oil behind the scenes. There are huge underground oil reserves in China that they built fake islands on top of and put runways and military troops on top of it. That's the kind of thing you're seeing about nations gathering and collecting whatever oil they can, protecting whatever oil they can. That's why I made the oilclock.com, which I've taken down now, but it was just a counter, sort of like the debt clock, talking about here's how much oil there is, here's 85 million barrels per day that we use, here's how many years that's going to last us. And I took into account all the new technologies and new energy finds, renewable resources. I took all of that into account. And Stanford even linked to and picked up my oil clock. But it's not just oil, we've also got rare earth elements, which became a big thing a few years back. It faded away for a while. You didn't hear about it as much. It was still as much of a significant issue, but no one talked about it. It's making a comeback now. That's why I keep mentioning the stock pick we made for subscribers of PeterLeads.com recently. You, 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 you. That's Energy Fuels. And it's a small company. It's doing pretty well since we picked it on January 25th. But they have a lot of involvement with rare earth elements, which is why one of the reasons we are looking at this company. But an example of a rare earth element is gadolinium. And did you know that I have gadolinium in my system? It's radioactive. And whenever I get an MRI, they put gadolinium through my veins so they can see if there's any progression of the disease. But I said no more of that. I spent a lot of time doing chelations and take it out of my system. But the thing is, I tell you about just platinum in your airbags, and there's all sorts of uses for gold and silver and platinum and palladium and other metals. But when it comes to rare earth elements, a lot of their value, a lot of their power is that they're so specific. There's no alternative for the types of things that they can enable. And it's a problem that China owns almost all of them. But over the last many years, there's been a massive push to de-dollarize, to get away from the U.S. dollar for all transactions, to get out from underneath the control that the SWIFT financial system has over countries like China, especially Russia. Saudi Arabia, Iran, and even the European Union. And you might say, aren't they our allies? Aren't they our friends? They want oil. They're having major energy issues. So we'll get into that as we go through this petrodollar and the reserve currency status, which are two different things I tell you, but they're cousins. If you have the petrodollar, if everyone uses your dollar for oil, you're a lot more likely to be the world's reserve currency. Here's a quote. Koren says China, Russia, and the European Union are some of the major movers behind the push. One of those reasons driving the shift away from the dollar is the prospect of being subject to U.S. jurisdiction if they transact in dollars. 
Now the Pedro Yuan is making appearances worldwide and it's very significant. That is the first domino. This is the beginning of the transition to the new economic world order. There's an option now. If everyone's eating McDonald's, then one day a new company called Burger King shows up. People now have a choice. And so maybe everyone still eats McDonald's, but there will slowly be more and more people who will start eating Burger King. It will bite into the market share. That's exactly what's happening. However, we're still at a point where 90% of every transaction for oil is in U.S. dollars still. Expect that number to continue to decline. Maybe not incredibly quickly, but it's quicker right now, the deterioration of the use of the U.S. dollar for oil. It's quicker right now than ever. And one of the things I always tell you is that a lot of the dollars being held by other countries around the world are being released back into the wild. The total U.S. dollar reserves among central banks was 70% in the year 2000, so 22 years ago, to the point where today it's at about 60%, and expect that number to also continue to decline. As these dollars are released back into the wild, some of the ways they'll do that is they might buy something from America, buy some fighter jets, they send the dollars for the fighter jets, and those dollars are now on our shores paying salaries to our people, engendering more inflation. But people say, well, if the U.S. dollar is losing the reserve currency status, if people are using it less, what's going to replace it? So people prognosticate maybe the special drawing rates, the SDRs, maybe Bitcoin, maybe the yuan, maybe gold. But I would suggest it won't be one thing, it will be a collection of things. But in case you're wondering what an SDR is, you understand that that's just a basket of a bunch of different fiat currencies. So when you pile a bunch of garbage together, it doesn't change what it is. It just makes a bigger pile. So don't worry, everybody. We've got SDRs. Again, not solving the problem. I talk about how the curtain is getting pulled back, but it's only slightly pulled back. It's got a lot more to go. The curtain's pulled back slowly at first, just like how people go bankrupt, slowly at first, and then really quickly. As the curtain gets pulled back, reality returns to the markets, there's going to be major, massive shifts in just about everything. And I have a couple more things to say quickly before we get to this big article that basically spells out the entire New World Order shift. We've recently seen the first break in the uptrend for the market that was almost unstoppable until it got stopped. And so then we saw stocks coming back down to reality. But what was it that was pushing up the market so much? The same thing as it was pushing up real estate prices. A massive, unprecedented bout of currency creation. And you can see a chart here from the St. Louis Fed showing you exactly how much currency is in circulation. Do you notice anything about this chart that's kind of sticking out to you? People only see the money being created to pay for whatever service or program. They don't see the follow-on effect that we're all going to be facing. So stocks have already started to break down. The bond market is in trouble. And then real estate will be next. And as it tumbles, it's going to take what's left of the wealth effect with it. People aren't going to feel wealthy anymore. But you've waited long enough. i got to get into this article now. This is from Reuters. Sanctions have cut Russia off from the global financial system and from nearly half of its gold and foreign exchange reserves, which stood at $606.5 in early April. Russia hit by Western sanctions, has called on the BRICS group of emerging economies to extend the use of national currencies and integrate payment systems, the finance ministry said on Saturday. What they mean by national currencies, that could be the yuan, that could be the ruble, but it won't be the U.S. dollar. On Friday, Finance Minister Anton Saluanov told a ministerial meeting with the BRICS, which consists of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, that the global economic situation has worsened substantially due to the sanctions the ministry's statements said. Now here's a part I pulled out that's really relevant to the new economic world order. The new sanctions also destroy the foundation of the existing international monetary and financial system based on the U.S. dollar, Solunov said. Take all this into consideration when you think about my petrodollar video I recently did. This is almost like an appendix to that video. If you haven't seen that video, if you do watch it, and I'll put a link to it at the end of this video, when you watch it, keep in mind everything I'm talking about in this article from the Russian Foreign Ministry. This pushes us to the need to speed up work in the following areas. The use of national currencies for export-import operations, the integration of payment systems and cards, 
our own financial messaging system in the creation of an independent BRICS rating agency, Silunov said. When he's talking about the financial messaging system, he's referring to the SWIFT system, which basically involves almost every banking institution in the world. And it's not only controlled by America, but it's also used by America as a way to punish other countries. So a lot of other countries that maybe have bad ideas in their mind, like China wanting to invade Taiwan, they don't want to be able or exposed to be punished by America when they do take over Taiwan. So they want to get out of the system, and they've been pushing for it pretty aggressively for a while, and Russia has as well. International payment cards, Visa, and MasterCard suspended operations in Russia in early March, and Russia's biggest banks have lost access to the SWIFT global banking messaging system. Russia set up its own banking messaging system, known as SPFS, as an alternative to SWIFT. Its own card payment system, MIR, or M-I-R, I don't know how to say that, began operating in 2015. This is all part of what Moscow is doing. Other countries are doing similar things, but they're setting up their country to be more independent so they don't have to rely on or be able to be punished by the American banking system. So Russia's been trying to develop a lot of homegrown tools, such as credit cards, payment systems, and all kinds of other financial tools. I would also suggest that if a country is making moves so that they cannot be punished for doing a bad action, such as invading another country, if they're setting up to not be as vulnerable to it, I think that we should all be very worried. The finance ministry said the BRICS ministers have confirmed the importance of cooperation in efforts to stabilize the current economic situation. That's another way of saying they're going to work together to get out from underneath the threat of the American banking system. The new sanctions also destroy the foundation of the existing international monetary and financial system based on the U.S. dollar, Sulunov said. Let that sink in for a minute. Everything is changing. There's a lot more that's going to affect you directly and in a more significant and deteriorous way than you probably realize yet. Even if you think it's going to be horrible, Prepare in cases even worse than that. I think that people are completely not seeing what's about to happen. And I'll do my best as it plays out, as I've told you it was going to play out, as it does this. I'm going to do my best to try and give you my opinion about how you can land on your feet and get through this. There's not a lot of good answers here. I'm hoping that you're going to be able to find a few. So make sure to check out the companion video about the US dollar losing the petrodollar status. And if you subscribe to this channel, we'll tell you what's happening next and what to do about it.